Hello, and welcome to this lecture entitled, Format Your Paper Successfully. Although I've asked you to follow Tarabian in matters of formatting, here I will exercise her permission to alter a few of her dicta. I do this because her advice is geared toward very formal papers like master's theses and doctoral dissertations. Your work here is much less formal, so I modify a few of those more formal things that she includes. I'll cover some general rules and specific advice about title, author, paper body pages, as well as footnotes and bibliography. Let me go over a few general rules. First, do not include a separate cover page. This is necessary for very formal papers, but here it's just one more formatting thing you'll fret over for no particular reason. Should you go to graduate school, you'll need that formatting information, but outside that milieu, you will not. There are a few things I insist on because they are standards and for reasons of self-preservation. I want to pay attention to your research, argument, and communication without having to figure out your idiosyncrasies. So I thank you for your formatting conformity. Your paper should have consistent one-inch margins all around. This is the default setting on most word processing programs. Next, make your font either 12-point Times New Roman or 11-point Calibri. 11-point Calibri is the default for MS Word since the introduction of the 2010 version. Calibri is a good sans serif font for reading blocks of text online, just as Times New Roman is a good serif font for reading blocks of printed text. Please do not use Arial or Helvetica, which are great for headings, but hard to read when the text is masked. To enhance readability, Double space all paper text except for block quotes and footnote or bibliographic entries, all of which are single spaced. Speaking of those last two, we'll discuss in a moment. You should include a bibliography and all citations should be as numbered footnotes as opposed to in-text citations that point to a works cited page. Let's talk about the first page followed by an example. The very first thing on the first page should be your title. That is, it should be one inch from the upper edge of the page or its digital analog, and you should center it. Double spaced below is your name as the author, also centered. Please do not insert that author name block with the date in the class in the upper left or right corner. There's no need for that. We all know what the class is and we all know who I am more or less. Here's an illustration of what I'm talking about from a paper I wrote for a conference in 2018. You can see the title begins at the top margin, which is set at one inch. And since it breaks to the next line, I leave it single spaced and in what's called an inverted pyramid. The shorter line goes beneath the longer. Following that is a double space, my name, another double space, and the first line of text. Speaking a bit more about that first page, think about the body of your paper's text. Again, keep it at one inch margins. Begin the first line after the author's name line and indent the first line of each paragraph by one half inch. Do not add extra space between paragraphs, which might mean you'll have to reset the default on MS Word, which adds an extra space for some annoying reason. The extra space is fine for business letters in which you do not indent first lines of paragraphs, but it's redundant in a paper like this and therefore unnecessary. Remember too, to number each page. I'm not particular where this goes, but my own preference is to insert the number using the page X of Y format in the lower right. You can add a number to page one or not as you see fit. This again is page one of that previous essay. 
you can see the margins are set at one inch with the first line of each paragraph indented by one inch. You can set this automatically even after you've written the entire paper by highlighting all the text using Control plus A, then clicking the paragraph bar on your word processing program. When you get the paragraph dialog box, find indentation and use the special pull down menu to choose first line set by one half inch. Scan to the end of the first paragraph here. You see there's no extra space and the indentation indicates why you've gone on to your next topic. Let me reiterate some instructions about footnotes and show you what they look like. I'll also do this for your bibliography. Remember to use Turabian's Notes Bibliography Style, not MLA or APA or any other author date or reference list style. You can create footnotes by placing your cursor at the place in your document that the footnote sources. Then if you're using MS Word, go to the References ribbon and click the Insert Footnote icon. Doing so inserts a superscript number at the point as well as at the bottom of the page. It also moves your cursor to the bottom or foot of that page so you can key in your citation. Understand that a footnote contains citations, but they're different things. You can key in citations to multiple sources in any footnote as long as you separate those citations from each other with a semicolon. I'll show you such a compound footnote in the next slide. Your citations should direct your reader to the exact source of your research, so include page numbers that your reader can check. Remember, too, that footnote citations and bibliographic entries perform different functions. They do not rely on each other to make sense of your references, which I'll address in just a moment. But because they differ in purpose, they differ in format. Please consult Turabian and previous lectures to understand how to format each. Footnote citations are single spaced. And while Turabian calls for them to be indented, don't bother. It's a bit of an unnecessary hassle, so let the word processor do its own thing. Remember to use competent full citations for the first reference to any source and equally competent subsequent citations every time you cite that same source again. The page we see here has a number of different things of interest. We'll begin with the linkage between the footnote number at the end of a line of text and the footnote citation to which it refers. If you look here, you can see the insertion point for footnote two in this paper. When I inserted this reference, the word processor took me to this space where I typed in multiple citations separated by semicolons. Why use this form? except when I cite quotations, I prefer to add only a single footnote at the end of the paragraph rather than adding a footnote every sentence or so. To do so, I gather all citations to all information in the paragraph and list it in a single footnote like you see here. Because this is footnote two, all the citations are formatted as first full citations. I've cited many of these references in later footnotes. In fact, footnote three cites the first reference in footnote two. So I use the author title form of subsequent citation. Another reason I choose this page as an example is because it contains a block quote, which you see here. You insert a block quote when you have multiple lines in a quotation. It's indented one half inch from both left and right, single spaced, and has no quotation marks. The block quote format is the visual clue that what you're doing is quoting. It ends with a footnote citation. Let me say one last thing about footnotes and citations. In a short paper of up to about 30 pages, Turabian's footnotes are designed to stand by themselves without reference to a bibliography or a list of works cited. 
Therefore, the first citation for a source should have complete information, which you do not need to repeat any other time you cite that source. Subsequent citations carry their particular formatting as a convenience for both you, the author, and for your readers. But because this is a class in methodology, I need to teach you one last thing, how to construct a bibliography. Here's another place where I might alter Turabian's instructions for reasons that I believe are legitimate. A bibliography is a list of sources that you cited in your paper. You create it for the convenience of the reader. Although there are many types of bibliographies, for our purposes, you only need to make yours alphabetical by author's last name or by the work's titles for those works without authors. You do not need to separate works by type of source though you might do so in a book length manuscript. Also, when you alphabetize by an authorless works title, like a newspaper article, do not alphabetize by a, an, or the. For example, a magazine article without a byline might be titled The Jackson Highway. You alphabetize that under J for Jackson rather than T for the. Usually, however, most of your sources will have authors, and because the bibliography is an alphabetical list, format for each entry is different than for corresponding footnote citations. Turabian goes over these differences in chapters 16 and 17, but the two most significant differences are that bibliographic entries invert the author's name and it separates citation elements with periods rather than commas or parentheses. One more, except for inclusive page numbers for articles, do not put page numbers into bibliographic entries. You're citing the entire work, it's a list, not the particular data point or interpretation. Now, the bibliography begins on the page following the last page of text. To go to that next page, don't just hit the enter key until you get there. Place your cursor at the very end of your text, then force a page break by keying the control and the enter keys. This will drive your cursor to the top of the next page. Insert the label bibliography and then construct your list of sources in alphabetical order and formatted correctly. Single space those entries and use a hanging indent for each. You can get to that from the MS Word home ribbon, the paragraph section, the small icon at the lower right of that little bar. Then on the dialog box, choose indentation, special, hanging, and by one half inch. Here's what a bibliography looks like. You see it's alphabetical by author's last names and the entries have hanging indentations. Look at this first entry. It's for a journal article. Examine the elements and punctuation. This entry is very simple for a book with a short title. But look at what's going on here at the bottom. Here I've cited multiple sources by the same author. In this case, I've cited three of my own works, two articles and a book. You see that I've used an eight space underline in place of repeating my name. This is per Turabian. And that I've arranged the entries alphabetical by title. In the first two, I had to go to the fourth word to alphabetize correctly. Map comes before mud and getting comes before most. So let's summarize. This paper covered general and specific guidelines for formatting your final paper. Set margins at one inch. Begin the first page with your title, then name. Double space your text except for block quotes, which you should use sparingly if at all, for footnotes and for bibliographic entries. Those should be single spaced. Indent the first line of each paragraph by one half inch and do not add more space between paragraphs. Use correctly formatted 
footnote citations to lead your reader to the source of your information and add a bibliography of all of the sources you cite, alphabetical by author's last name, and at the very end of your paper. This then ends the lecture. As always, thank you for your attention.